Our next, not one, but two speakers come from ArcelorMittal, which specializes in new applications in the usage of additive manufacturing and heavy industry. We're very lucky to have the Global Research Program Leader, Virgilio Garcia, and the Additive Manufacturing Global R Research and Development Spain Manager, Jose Lopez. Round of applause, please. Hi, everyone. The idea is just to introduce ourselves today. Uh, you know, ArcelorMittal is a steel group that uh, was playing around uh, research in different areas. And we are, let me say, the newcomers to, to the additive manufacturing. We have a start, uh, let me say, three years ago, just jumping into, into the area of additive manufacturing. And in that case, we were creating, let me say, a network between all of our research centers. Currently, we have research centers all over let me say, all over the world, uh, mostly in, in Europe and United States. And uh, currently, we are more than 1,600 people working in research. And inside this company, we have created our own groups that uh, they are focused on additive manufacturing. And how we start is the, the way I, I will try to explain today. And it's mainly making, a, making ourselves some questions. Why, why is use additive manufacturing? That was the, the first initiative. So somebody come to us and, and say, okay, guys, uh, just take a look about what is going with IT manufacturing and, and tell me what we can do with that. And we start to analyze what are the different successful cases we have identified in the, in the different industries, let's say. And uh, we were analyzing that in many, many cases, uh, additive at that moment was mainly focused on fast prototyping, on complex geometries, part consolidation in some cases, but minor cases. And, uh, and many people was thinking about, okay, what you have with additive is more a toy or a concept than real final parts. And we try to change this mindset in our own company, let's say. So based on that, we have discovered during the meantime another uh, interesting new, that is that uh, GE Additive uh, was trying to change the way of making, uh, let me say, engines by doing additive manufacturing. Uh, let me say more than 800 parts in only 12 parts much more easy to maintain, much more uh, reliable, and also uh, fuel consumption reduced by, by well, as much as 20%, as I said the presentation. And with this information, we came again to, to the management and we tried to convince the people that uh, it can be real. So people is using that. So why not to use it in our own applications? So it's still something that is difficult to, to, to put in a, in a company like ours that, uh, let me say, is mindset of making a steel during many, many years and in the same way, for sure. But in that case, of course, we need to, to ask too many partners to help us in order to test different technologies, test different applications, and make new parts. And we decide to, to start by doing spare parts for our own process. So it is something that is, let me say, no more, nothing more strong than uh, heavy industry spare parts. So if you refer to that, or mining industry, it's something that everybody's thinking, okay, what you have there, is for sure something that should be strong and should have some specific properties. So we decided to start to make our own spare parts, and we call many people just to help us on the, on the meantime, let's say. In that case, well, you see some of them that they were supporting us how to print the parts. In, our, in, our, in some cases, we have with MX3D, we were collaborating with them also in how to characterize the material that they were printing at that time. And uh, we were trying to make our own parts. We get in some collaboration also with some specific companies on the additive manufacturing sector. And today we have, let me say, a workshop that is with many, many technologies. Let me say that we have almost all, all technologies available. We have it and, and we can test it because we have a very good network around uh, our own project. So thanks to that, we, we start to make our first initial spare parts. And this is just an example. We were doing at that time uh, drill bits. That's something that uh, has been tested in our own blast furnaces, where we were drilling our blast furnace with a drill bit 3D printed with internal channels, supporting 1,400 degrees C during the drill. And uh, this is another case that is a pump impeller for a, a sink pot, where the pump is in a 400 degree melt sink. So at the end, it's working completely in a really, let me say, not easy environment, let's say in that way. And uh, thanks to demonstrate that in our company, we were able also to define a new way of making things. So we have demonstrated that it's possible to make spare parts. It's possible to make it in a reliable way. 
and we can supply these spare parts for our own industry in a really big niche market because at the end, uh, let me say that we are a really big company right now. We have 240,000 people working in the, in the company. And uh, let me say in assets and maintenance uh, equipment, we have more than 1 billion of uh, euros in parts, in spare parts in the world. So at the end, just supply all these spare parts could be a business by itself. So in that case, we were proposing to create our own company inside the, inside the group that is called the Steel Printers. Uh, well, many of you know already because you, you were in contact with them. But uh, let me say they are, they are a company where we are really proud of them because what they are doing today is just to imagine the world in a different way. They are creating a spare parts for our own industry, let me say, and it's not easy task. And they are substituting today many, many parts by, by additive manufacturing. And I will let Jose, my, my colleague, just to explain how, how we intend to be doing in the future. So thank you. Uh, well, uh, regarding the, the technologies we use, we are using today, uh, as uh, we are a heavy industry, we are focusing uh, mainly in steel, uh, in metals, in printing in metals mainly, and uh, focusing in, in steel mainly. What technologies we use? Uh, we use, uh, well, uh, we can say all the technologies available in the market today uh, regarding steel uh, or metal printed. In this sense, uh, as you know, there are uh, processes that uh, melting the, the powder or the wire, uh, this is uh, powder burst fusion or directed unit deposition. Uh, we also uh, technologies that uh, sin, uh, with uh, using sintering processes, uh, like uh, for example uh, material extrusion, binder jetting, or also material jetting. But we are testing also uh, some other technologies that are uh, in the in these days that is uh, appearing in the in the market and uh, we will uh, present it uh, afterwards. Uh, regarding uh, one of the problems we, we find is the, uh, the tools for, uh, for using or uh, for applying these, te these technologies. Regarding the digitalization, uh, we uh, need tools for, uh, simulate, uh, for simulating or to predict the uh, behavior of the uh, printed materials. For example, if we are talking about the steel, uh, we try to simulate how the uh, printed material with, uh, will be, um, what, what will be the, the, the microstructure for example, of the printed material. Uh, regarding the, also the simula uh, simulating, try to simulate the, the, the printed process itself. For example, uh, what will be the distortion uh, in the printed process? Will, we uh, need to predict this distortion in order to compensate that. And also, how to simulate very complex uh, shapes. For example, if you, we are talking about uh, lattice uh, that we are uh, using very, uh, very frequently, uh, there are, today there are not uh, available in the market uh, software that uh, can uh, simulate this uh, structure in a very efficient way. Uh, so, many tools uh, are under development today. And, for example, uh, for the designers, they uh, must use uh, a, a very, uh, a, new, a new concept, a new paradigm. So, we are very focused in using uh, generative design, this kind of software that uh, are appearing in the market uh, today. 
for example, we have uh, some examples, for example, uh, of uh, consolidating parts. That is a tremendous uh, advantage for our uh, maintenance uh, teams. And also, uh, we are testing some, uh, we can say, proof of concepts, try to embed uh, sensors inside the, the printed parts. For example, for uh, measuring the deformation, the, the uh, temperature inside, and these kind of things. Uh, but uh, for a heavy industry, we uh, we need to uh, we need bigger machines. Uh, what uh, are the biggest machines uh, that uh, we know that the, uh, there are in the market? For example, uh, we put here two examples. One of them is uh, in uh, relative, uh, relative space. That is a machine that can print uh, two four, uh, plus four uh, meters. And the other one is uh, one of the biggest machines of uh, SLM in the world that is placed in South Africa and uh, can print a volume of two meters plus uh, 0 0.6 meters plus uh, 0 0.6 meters. Uh, this is an example. Uh, it's not uh, related with, uh, our, uh, with our industry, but it's uh, a very good example uh, that uh, we print, uh, we design and print a, a part for a rocket that launch uh, satellites for, for, uh, to the space, uh, small sat satellites like uh, CubeSats and these kind of things. In this case, the original part was made in, uh, in titanium, and uh, this part was uh, redesigned completely with uh, lattice uh, structure inside and this kind of things. Uh, was completely redesigned and printed with a steel, uh, with a margin steel. We test uh, this uh, new part, and uh, well, the result uh, was very good. Is uh, I don't remember exactly what 1.626 uh, uh, kilonewtons of uh, resistance. Uh, um, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, well, we presented here two videos of new technologies that are appearing in the market. Uh, one of them, uh, in the right side, in the left side, excuse me, is a technology that uh, cool, uh, is uh, called Meltio that appeared in the, in the news uh, some weeks ago, and uh, it will be presented in, in, in Fornex in Germany. Uh, this is a, uh, like a DD technology uh, printed with wire, uh, uh, but uh, using lasers. It's a very uh, cheap technology, and uh, we, it's uh, very, very promising also because um, they can print large parts uh, with full dense, and they have, uh, this technology has uh, a lot of uh, advantage. And, the, and in the right side is a real-time uh, printed technology. It's under development, uh, developing today. Uh, and uh, this is a new concept. Uh, they call, uh, the, the company calls, uh, 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 you'll print it, but the company is uh, Digital Alloys, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the, that video is in, in real time. It's a very promising uh, technology also. There are uh, another small companies that are developing today also another technologies. For example, one company is developing a SLM technology with more than 100 uh, laser work, working together in the, in the same uh, powder bed. Um, this is all for from our sites. Uh, yes. 
just to finalize in the last minute, because Maggie is already trying to kill me, but uh, what, what, I, what we want to give you as a, me as a final message is that we, we were learning during all this period, and we are really, the only way that we can be exponential and we can be learning even more is just by, collaboration, by collaborating with many other entities. And we are today open just to accept, by any case, challenges that we want to test the technology or even new cases or new applications where we are looking today. And uh, if you have any idea about uh, new things that you want to do, just please contact us. You have our contact here, and it will be a pleasure just to, to get in contact. Thank you so much.